and welcome to Gag of the Millennial. A show where we talk about pop culture, current events. And spill the hot Darjeeling right into the octave nerve. Oh, welcome to our eulogy. Well, <laughs> Today. She died. She died. She, she died, did, yes. Yes. Well, yes. And who is she? Well, 2023. 2023. <laughs> 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 See, there was a the point. Yeah, there was, there was, no, everything's just nonsense. Anyway, hello, hello. everyone. Hello, hello, Luxaria. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. I've got a pain of sciatica today, oh, so yes. I might just yell at random points. Never had it before. change of life. Oh, no. apparently so. You just get to your mid 30s and it's like, oh, this bit's broken now. It's broken now, yeah. And it's also going to affect yeah. everything around uh-huh. it, which is also broken. And has a repugnant smell. Oh, thank I didn't you. tell you that yet, but can Goiter. you please, yeah, wash yourself? Does she wash up? She you never washed up. Does she say to cut? Yes, death. Happy Welcome. New Year first. Oh, yeah. Happy, happy New Year. This no, have a terrible New Year. Have a two terrible New Year. <laughs> What's the opposite of ha- sad New Year. <laughs> have a sad. No, I've had many of them. <laughs> Late at night, December 31st, going. Oh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> Today, we thought we would revisit a Reddit that we looked at, what, two plus years ago. And you guys Literally. really loved it. I don't know why it's taken us so long to do like a part two. I don't know. Yeah, I, um, I'm glad that you suggested this because it's something that I, I rewatched a little bit of it today and I had my old face in it. And I was like, oh, oh my God, yeah. such a long time ago. Ugh. Anyway, yeah. So today we're going to go on to Ask Reddit and look yes. at some of the most asked uh, questions over the past like year or so. Yes. And see what people have said. Yeah. Last time it was unhinged. I remember it just being bonkers, the things that people were asking and saying. I think this one's going to be also potentially the same sort of vein of just absolute bonkersness. Bonkersness. Bonkers, bonky, wonky, donkey, bonky, wonky. Oh. I've got... Oh, anyway. the 90s. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave us a good review on any podcast thing good that you read. do listen to. Good read. <laughs> Welcome to I my read biography. The podcast. Okay. Oh. So I've got some like a nice sort of like less intense ones to begin with and then okay. they get more intense as they go. Okay. What phrase needs to die? I've got this one. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. I, knew, I knew we'd have some. I knew we'd have some the same. Oh, yes. What phrase needs to die immediately? So I actually read this one because I was a little bit like, I've got some from my own personal childhood mm-hmm. that I was like, okay, I hated hearing that. Yep. Like parents would say, like, because I said so is one of the worst things because I've I said so, ever yeah, been yeah. told. Like, yeah. please tell me why that is. My ADHD brain used to just like fire off and be like, but tell me why. Even though, like, even without ADHD, like, a child doesn't understand the world completely. So when you say you can't do it because I said so, no. the child still doesn't learn. No, but I used to fixate what? on yeah. things and be like, but <laughs> why? Mm-hmm. And it would drive me insane. I actually liked a couple of the comments in this one. The okay. one that really got me, got my vibes going, is very poignant at the moment. I don't know how much I'm going to share right now, but there was a comment about someone saying, people that go on rants online and then end it with do better. Yes, okay. I completely agree. The phrase, the concept of like do better or like this idea of like posting a thought sneeze on Twitter and then ending it with like, take that, let that sink in, do better. Do better, And then feeling like they've achieved something by doing that without actually enacting any change whatsoever. Yeah. Can die. That concept, that whole thing can just go. Mm -hmm. I, so there was one here that I thought it says, uh, but people aren't ready for that conversation. Yeah, same sort of nonsense. They'll say that's something really horrendous or like, they'll say it's like a hot take or something. And they'll go, but people aren't ready for this conversation. Just to like, almost like say to their, convince themselves that what they're saying is like the popular thing to say. But also but no, one's no one has it. ever said it before. Yeah. yeah, so it's like they are the tea. Do you know what, one of the things that really annoyed me from this year? What? When people say I'm in my ex era oh. or I'm in my something era, I hate it. It becomes so... Because like... Everything comes, most of these things now become popularized on Twitter or from TV shows and things. And obviously, Drag Race, this whole season of Drag Race, it was like, they constantly kept saying, I, th- I do think I'm it in was this kind of inspired by Taylor Swift's era's tour, because she's was like, it? I'm in my this era. Oh, so it? I feel like it's just everywhere. But it just became like, insufferable white twinks on Twitter, just being like, I'm in my boss era or something. And it's like, they've just like, They've just got a tote bag on. Yeah, like, it's so <laughs> Gay Twitter is a bit of a parasitic, like, oh, creep that they know, take everything and, like, ruin it. It is the funniest thing sometimes, though, because, like, the, like, queers are the worst to other queers. Like, yeah. we will see someone doing something and be like, look at the state of that. <laughs> and it becomes the funniest thing because there's this level of, like, utter delusion mm-hmm. that comes with being, like, LGBT. Because you have to develop this delusion in order to be, like, 
mentally safe for your yeah. life. Like you have to, when you're growing up, you kind of have to be like, I am the moment. I am the you're moment, literally yeah. just like in a white top with a tote bag. But you're like, <laughs> I, no one has ever yeah, done this yeah, before. Uh, but then like most of the, the heads, this heads around you kind of haven't. So maybe yeah. you are kind of like the moment. Mm -hmm. And then you meet other queers and everyone has the same mindset and everyone's a bit like, you are just wearing a tote you bag. You are just wearing like, a tote just bag. Wearing, yeah. you're not, you didn't do that six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. You didn't do it now. <laughs> but the whole era thing just drove me insane. I was like, can we just stop saying I'm in my ex something era? I'm like, it's just cringe at this point. Point. Like yeah. it does get to a stage where it just becomes cringe. I think what a lot of these things that like become popular in cringe like this enter my vocabulary. Um, ironically at first, like, being like, oh, I'm in my blah era. Yeah. And then I've said it so ironically so many times that it becomes actually unironic. Mm -hmm. Well, it happened with us when we were going, eh. Oh my God, yeah. Like, like we don't really bimbo do as much anymore. Nonsense. We go, eh, at the end of a sentence when you say something unhinged and then mm. it just became part of conversation. It just became part of it. Period, eh. It just fully got into our, fully got into our like psyche. But yeah, just the era thing. was going, eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another thing here that I spoke about a little bit on like live streams before is when people will, will tidy something and say, I've got OCD and they're oh. over dramatic, like they overuse these terms of like illnesses or mm. disorders mm -hmm. to like make it as like, oh, I'm a quirky thing. Like actually people who actually have OCD, it is like a fully oh, it's debilitating. life yeah. like changing thing that happens to you. Actually with OCD, like c can barely leave their bedroom without doing like 50 different things. Like, I've, I remember watching a show a little while ago where this person had to touch his light switch 12 mm -hmm. times where mm -hmm. he even like leave or enter a room for no reason it was just that was part of his it's like what his brain was telling it? and like yeah. there was this one woman about washing her hands and she would wash her hands and then go oh well i've actually just touched the tap now so i need to wash the tap but now i've just touched the tap with the dirt was so i've got to wash my hands again but now i have to oh, do so and it was sad, like she washed her hands like six or seven times before leaving and that when, pe when people say things like i did they just tidied their room and they're going oh I, this this yeah. toy has to be a dust i've got ocd it's like yeah. you just like got things in order no. and I, I think it's really offensive to be actually suffer with like this. hundred percent. It happens with other things as well. It does. Like, but OCD is one of those common ones I always hear all the time. It's like, shut up. It's no. not fun being neurodivergent. It can be fun. Like it can bring really strong friendships and like actually be quite rewarding, especially when you manage to manage it in a way that it makes it work for you. But like getting to that stage isn't fun. Uh -huh. A lot of people will not enjoy being neurodivergent. Mm -hmm. And like, I didn't enjoy school because of that. I didn't enjoy like a well, lot of the jobs when we were in I've school, been into. Like people's mannerisms no, acceptance mm. around like anything. ADHD and anything like that were very different. Just like, you're just stupid. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm not. But yeah, she'll I sort of am. Yeah. Awful, awful While experience. While she eats ants from the cellar. <laughs> I, I was ne no, I was not a dirty child. <laughs> dirty, I was very, very pretty. Dirty, dirty, I remember dirty girl. there was a, a girl in my class who used to eat snails. Was she called like, Siobhan? She wasn't called Siobhan. No, I don't know what she was called. Boris. Boris, yeah. She was called Boris and I used to think, oh, what a dirty child eating mm. snails. And that anyway. woman <laughs> turned out to be <laughs> you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hello, yeah. Uh, Talking about my childhood, my mum used to say this thing. Whenever I'd lose something, being ADHD, things would just disappear out of my hands whilst holding them. Right, mum, help me find this. And she'd be like, well, it's always in the last place oh, no, you look. It's stupid. You know, I hate it. Of I, course it is. I, because you wouldn't find it and carry on looking for it, would you? I, rem like, I remember doing a, um, I remember doing a video, like, God, 10 years ago of like mm. stupid sayings that need to die. And one of what, them was, one of them? there's always the last, last place, place you look. look. Oh, oh, oh. I've just seen one. That People don't like me because I say it like it is. Oh, no. People I, don't like me because I'm just brutally honest. That's like, the, no, you're actually just an awful person. Yeah, that is. If that's not the most average Trump supporter you've ever heard exactly. ever. Exactly. <laughs> like, if you can't find a way to deliver information to people in a soft way, not necessarily like sugarcoating it and lying, but mm -hmm. just being like, do you know what? This thing, let's let's like bring you up to speed on what's, what the tea is. Yeah. Instead of being like, you're a horrible woman, I hate you, I wish yeah. you'd die. When these sort of sayings start to come into the first, the dessert guy through whatever, like they're actually kind of used in a way that's like not overly linked with just outright homophobic no, and, trans true, yeah. and all of a sudden it becomes bastardized over time and then a bit like the woke thing get, a woke like, actually had a meaning to begin it with did, but now yeah. woke has become so bastardized by people that it doesn't mean mean anything anymore it so means now, anything they don't like absolutely so this saying like i just say it like it is at one point we probably would have been used in like the least offensive way that we're thinking of now because we're now when you hear that it's people being literally like the worst you people. should die yeah. because you are trans it's like i'm just saying what i'm just saying what yeah. everyone else thinks i'm just saying how it is so yeah. i think i feel like 
because I don't know who originated. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but I feel like that's definitely happened over time with most of these. Just, like, but the thing is also the people that say this are usually the most fragile, sensitive. People oh, absolutely, well. you absolutely. Just be, you just say about well, I don't like the fact that you say it like that because it makes you look like an utter twat yeah. when you say that yeah. phrase, and they're like, no, 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 no me, no, I'm, I'm, everyone I'm, thinks what I'm thinking. Yeah. No, don't single me out. I'm dying. Awful people. Well, that's the thing. It's these people who say that kind of stuff and then see a gay person on TV and then have a freak out because it's in strictly come down to two men paired together. Oh, do you remember that? Like, that was just a, wasn't that a shenanigan? Ridiculous. It's like if you if you if seeing two men dancing on a TV show sends you into such a rage like they that. They got so many Ofcom complaints from that. It's probably stupid. just like little old little old Peggy and Devin mm. being like, Ah, <laughs> this isn't my ballroom that I grew up with in the nineteen twenty. <laughs> No now, people said alive who are alive in the 20s. That's like 103. It is 100 years ago, yeah. <laughs> My grandmama was born in 1929 and hey. she's still here. She and probably was one of those she people. She was the queen. Well, no, she wasn't. No. I wouldn't be doing this podcast <laughs> if she was. <laughs> <laughs> be in a castle somewhere just hidden by the family yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah we don't have a son no so no, no no they never existed <laughs> which profession attracts the worst kind of people i mean a lot of like reality tv production stuff <gasps> Yes. Like people who produce a lot of these TV shows are evil, evil, evil people. I watched a thing about Jade, Jade Goody, she could say Jade Goody oh, yeah. from from mm -hmm. Big Brother. It was some of the production team were talking about what they were doing when she went in the second time to kind of like make her reactive. Mm -hmm. Like we're not going to talk about what the, the show itself, but the things no. that they said that the way they made her react was like really sad and like oh. really like graphic. And like watching shows about old reality TV shows, like some of the stuff that the producers have done in order to make contestants crack yes is really really I think big brother sadistic. was notorious yeah. for that as well yeah. wasn't it because like sleep deprivation was part mm. of it and anyone's going to be behave completely deranged and yeah. be really irritable yeah if you've been sleep deprived so one of the ones that sticks out in my mind it's not necessarily like a specific career choice but it's any time you give like community members an aspect of power. Yes. So like one of the ones that I can immediately think of is like American homeowners associations. Oh God. You know, anyone who's like, we've got a committee. We've, we've got had, a committee. We've had a meeting about yeah. your bin and it's too far off the curb. So we're going to put a fine on your These house. These neighborhood it's watch things. Literally yeah. just like a collection of old people with too much time on their hands. Like, yeah. oh, you haven't, we've noticed that your grass is slightly longer than it should be. Yeah. A thousand pounds. A thousand it's pounds. It's like literally just like any time that you can give, or, uh, like there's a voting system of giving the like worst people in your community well, any amount of power. I watched a video on one of these like Karen Facebook groups, or whatever, and it was one that said there was this man who left his like parcel out on his like front porch for like an hour too long. And there was like two people went to his door banging how unacceptable it was that they left a parcel out on like the step. And it's like, you can barely even see it if you're on the road like, and you're having a go and screaming at this man's like ring cam being like, oh, take it's... your parcel, it's disgusting, you've left here all day, you're making the place look dirty. And it's like, you are obscene. It's also like, you clearly have nothing else going on. Your... Like, where's your full-time job if you're just like spying on your neighbor's parcels Absolutely. outside the Absolutely, yeah. What are you, like, what are you doing? What are you doing like, with what your you life? Doing? Yeah, if I was part of that home and I'd be like, well, actually, what actually breaks rule 13 of code conduct 9A is yeah. peeping on me as a neighbor. Is actually yeah. breaking the code. Yeah, Awful curtain twitches people. are like the worst. I've heard so many stories. Like, I won't put, I won't put their names in, but... No. Like where some of our friends used to live, it was it felt like they said it felt like Wisteria Lane, uh, like you know Desperate Housewives. I can imagine. And the amount of times that they would just be like have gawps and like people shouting things at them in the street just because like they existed in this area as queer people. Like it was really sad to hear those stories. Like, yeah, it's like, shocking, isn't it? Oh, MLMs. Pyramid scheme. Oh, pyramid people. schemes. They always oh, attract God. the worst kind of mm -hmm. people. They're like, hi, I haven't spoken to you in 20 years. Now it's really awful to you. Would you like to buy my perfume? Do you want to my body shop party? Yeah, no. I, my Anne Summer's dildo party. It's weird that they still, like, because no one at this point, these sort of like multi, they're called multi level mm, marketing. marketing. Like, everybody knows at this point what they are and like mm. kind of what it's about. Like, no one goes into these MLMs and actually go, like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm yeah. going to sell these products. Like, it's a funnel system, funnel funneling system. of money. So, like, when I hear people trying to do it now, I'm like, you're terrible. Like, why are you doing this? Yeah, like, why are you bothering? You're this, this isn't only making you look stupid, but like, it makes you look. Money it's, hungry and selfish it's, it's, and grabby. It's like desperation as well. There's an aspect of like, oh, it's a bit cringe. Please stop talking to me about it. I mean, I understand that like it, it they kind of prey on these people that are like, oh, make money from home. Whilst you're busy yeah. doing something else, mm -hmm. you can just sell all this. And it's like, well, in order to sell something, you kind of have to know what it is and also maybe like know some of the benefits of it. And most of the products that are involved in MLMs are 
trash. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. literally, worst of the worst, cheapest quality nonsense. It makes me feel like a grandma's been scammed or something. It's that very same feeling of like... Oh. It's the same as like a lot of those sort of like box things that you get from like the Geek Box or mm. like all mm-hmm. those kind of things. Or like even the, can- the candy ones that I used to get, like obviously not knowing what candy from these like st- other countries were, I didn't realise that like a lot of the stuff that I'm paying for is like the cheap home brand yeah. stuff from other countries that have actually, because the amount of times I've comments being like, that's not actually a good representation of what we are. But obviously at the beginning, I'm like, well, I can't say or whatever you that. Yeah, you don't but know, the more do I did it, I was like, oh, like these brands Scams. and products that I'm getting in these like boxes that cost like 30 pounds mm. are actually only worth like five pounds in like UK money. It's like, they've fully been scams. A lot of these like boxes that you get is just full of tat that cost them like nothing 100%, to do. 100%, 100%. It's a similar vein to those things, you know, mystery boxes. Yeah. I'm like, mystery boxes is just a brand wanting to get rid of their stuff that doesn't sell yeah absolutely that's all it is absolutely but it, i know it, i know the excitement of like oh what are you gonna I love that. no it's yeah. all just gonna be tat and although they'll be like has a value of blood it's like yeah but those things didn't sell so they don't have a value absolutely that's why yeah, you've yeah. got them in a mystery box because yeah. if they had a value you wouldn't be able to get them in a mystery box they'd yeah. be telling you what it is because they want you to buy it absolutely what was once a highly respected thing that is now a complete joke Oh God! I Facebook. love the the first. <laughs> so Facebook's on the list. <laughs> um, one of the thing here God. is McAfee antivirus. Oh God! Those yeah. like computers don't need that. Like I always get, I always get notifications being that you should get Norton antivirus also. Just but like, computers case. have it in them now. Oh God! God, there's so many things actually. Like the concept of buy it for life is an absolute joke now because yeah. you're buying like brand new like. Any technology you buy now is literally like in a year's time, so it's actually very outdated mm-hmm, and it's also mm-hmm. not working for some reason. Absolutely, absolutely. I do think phones are definitely one of those things. Although I will say iPhone, the last couple of iterations of iPhone have actually been quite good. No, I agree. Like Facebook at one point, I remember when we were in high school, like in sixth form, like Facebook was the thing. Yeah. Everyone was using it. When was the last time you heard anyone say anything about Facebook that wasn't linked to like problems, hateful yeah. problems or like misinformation yeah. or like data mining like it's so linked now just terrible things mm. i never hit anyone say like, anything positive about facebook mm. because i just think if i think it's like the boomer the boomer place oh, now where they, where they just like spread the most hateful shit around a hundred percent and i think also extrapolating from that maybe similar vein but not quite elon musk Elon Musk has so, tr- truly changed his literally, image. Yeah. I thought, so when Elon Musk came on the scene and I was hearing his interviews about Tesla cars mm-hmm. and hey, his appreciation for Nikola Tesla and like the advancements of technology for like the benefit of the human race and whatever, I thought, oh, okay, actually, like this is a sensible guy who's got like, I don't mind, like, sure, like you're doing all of this, like mm-hmm. that's fun. But ever since he's bought Twitter or X or whatever, or whatever you want to call it now, it's just like, the it's, it's, I, don't, I don't understand. Like this person's media image has just gone totally the other way for me. I'm literally almost 180% opinion change as well. Yeah. Like, I used to really want a Tesla car thinking, oh my God, that'd be great. I, the idea of giving him any money now makes me go, makes me feel quite ill. So yeah. I'm like, you know what? No. When I was on Reddit yesterday, there was actually a funny little meme. It was in what I can't what group it was I was on, but it was a photo of a person with a Tesla and there was a sign at the bottom saying, I bought this before I knew how terrible he was. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because there's no other like actual electric car company that's doing as much as Tesla is. So this is a weird one for me to say. I feel like streaming services have become a bit of a joke recently. Yes, I would agree. Because there's so... COVID really changed the world for many different ways. Some mm. some, some good things came out of it, some bad things came out of it. I love that now when you go in restaurants, a lot of them now you can just order at the table and pay there. Yeah. I love that you can do it. It makes it easier. There are some things like that that I enjoy. I feel like at that time, suddenly every single platform was like, we need a streaming service and everything needs to be a subscription. The amount of times now that I go to try to find something that I want, I really want to watch something and it's just not anywhere anymore. Like yeah. none of it has it. None of them oh, have it Oh, you're freaking to the choir. Here's this. I found a, found a sh- I found out about a photography show today that I was like, oh my God, maybe I'll react to it on the channel. No. No. Can't find it anywhere. No. So like, I actually, I'm I'm kind of in a place now. I'm like, I'm kind of glad that I actually still love having physical media Should because- we, We're going to go I, back to that. Yeah. I never have to like worry, worry too much. If I want a film now, I actually go on Amazon and I'll like actually buy a film and watch it. It seems obscene How to very say that now. of your- No, I but know, it's true. Because, because the amount of times- insufferable. I couldn't, find Miss Doubtfire anywhere for a while and oh now it's, it's on Disney Plus now which is fine but like I couldn't find it for ages and also Transing the kids uh, Legally Blonde I want I wanted, really? to, I wanted, find to, I wanted to find I'm shocked Legally that. Blonde clips and I could not find which, if any streaming service here that had it so I've had to buy it again just so I can because I want to use it for like videos and things yeah. 
Couldn't find it anywhere. I was like, and That's Amazon wild. had it, but it was like rent it or do, I'm not. I'm not going to rent a video. Like I'd rather just buy it stupid, on Amazon. It? Amazon. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. But also the amount of money now that they're charging for some of these streaming services and like Netflix like upping all their prices and even um, Prime Video are now going. We're going to put adverts in this one. If you don't want adverts, you've got to give us a little bit more money. Yeah. And it's like. It's the, the the extraction of wealth again. Again, it's like the Cosby Livy, blah de blah. Going on from your Netflix thing, Netflix is also becoming a bit of a joke because it's like, oh, we'll commission this brand new series and it's going to be great and there's 10 episodes, really get into the story. Oh, we cancelled. We cancelled. Oh, we cancelled it. The, the it's time so they infuriating. It, yeah. I love the look of 1899, mm -hmm. which is that like Titanic I wanted to watch it. I wanted to watch yeah, it. Once as soon I, as I found out it was cancelled, I was like, there's no point. There's there no point, no point the starting point? this. And it's like, okay, that's just wasted media now. Well, the stupid thing about that was, as I think we said a little while ago, like they released that exactly the same time as they released Wednesday, which was like the most successful thing they've ever done. And they're like, we don't know why this thing didn't do as well because you released it and the identical time as another show that did so unbelievably well. Of yeah. course, and that's on didn't your do it. platform. It's like not it, like you're competing with anyone. Yeah, that's you ridiculous. could have waited like a month or something. Like, why would you release it at the exact same time and then moan that people didn't Stupid, watch it? Stupid, really Dumb. bad business practice. But again, it's one of these things where I'm just like, I don't, I don't want like you can't have cult classics anymore no. because you don't give them time to like stew in the in the like fandom and then you yeah. create this toxic fandom that has to be so instant reward or you're just like well that was not that didn't bring us immediately in a billion dollars so it has to be axed yeah it's like sometimes you can just do something because people like it mm -hmm. and i mean i know that's like very rich coming from like a capitalist society <laughs> but like sometimes you can like, yeah do you, you, elvira elvira she's still got a career she, if that was made now they'd be like cancelled cancelled never see her yeah, again put yeah. her in the box dead yeah but i mean talk about elon musk like even just twitter has become a joke in itself yeah that's like, very that true used to be i used to go there for news yeah. or for like contacting cu customer support yeah have you ever tr have you tried to like use the app and, and contact like a business to try and be like oh i just quickly message them on twitter and not like, recently <gasps> so they've they now stay if you want to like it can be a business i tried to do something with i think it was british gas actually i tried to contact them via twitter and it was like because you're not a verified account you can't message this person oh yeah and dumb like, yeah this is a verified like british company that i would like quick contact to and they advertise on their website yeah. contact us on twitter can't now because you can't. elon musk is like you have to give us you have to dollars. pay for it yeah well someone says here walking into a workplace to inquire about a job in person Oh, that the idea of someone saying to that is a bit of a joke. Yeah. But like the the kind of people that say that haven't worked since like 1972, mm -hmm. like or haven't had to apply for a job since like 1972. Well, actually, saying that the whole the whole saying a concept of like back in my day we had it like this. Now when people say that, you just think you're a fucking asshole. Yeah. I think back when we were children, when we would hear that, it was one of these. Oh yeah, we can we have to work hard. But actually now, when people say that, they just go, "Why aren't you suffering like I did?" Yeah. And oh, people 100%. see it. They see it. We see it now for what it I've actually paid my dues yeah. and you have to as yeah. well kind of thing Do. talk about jokes becoming a joke tv license oh that's become an absolute joke what is that? like yeah. ludicrous like but have you heard that they're cancelling it the tory government yeah but it's like, like 2025 or something though it's ages it's away even further it's like 27 oh I is think. it 27 yeah, oh, stupid. but they're like we need to put the money up so they want to really rinse everyone for as much money as possible just put adverts on the bbc i can't believe one singular channel has got this like Choke hold on like society's like joke 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 you're a joke well you're like, a joke you, Yo, <laughs> you're the joke. Now, I don't know if I would necessarily agree with this language, but it's very, I'm scared. It's very poignant. It's very poignant, pertinent question. It's very pussy. What made you go, wow, this person is an absolute psycho? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Actually, when I was working at BHS, one of the ladies came in and she was like completed a purchase and I had seen her a few times and we just kind of like just struck up a conversation and she went to pay with her um, card and at the time we had to do the little like uh, signature things mm -hmm. and I, I literally printed out a receipt and had her sign it and she was like is that email? <laughs> is, that e is that email? And I was like, this is, this is a receipt. <laughs> and she was like, is that, is that what email is? There's no way that I can possibly ever explain to you <laughs> what an email is if you think this receipt I'm holding up is an email. <laughs> so I was just like, I just said, no, it's not. And I just sort of carried on with my day. But she was so like flummoxed by it. She was like, is, is that email? Is that email? Like, it's, it's a genuine question. And it's like, I could have been like, no, an email is an electronic mail where you sit down and you, but like, they're not going to get that. No. She was like 65. And I was just like, no. I mean, if we're talking about things like that, it's, you know, I, the two that spring to mind, I've, I've told, I think I've told one of these stories, but oh, one piss, of them was, on the was, the piss, was the piss on the till woman. <laughs> she came into work and we didn't have what she wanted. She couldn't get away. So she literally squatted over the self-scan till and just pissed where you put the bags. 
just pissed all over the till and walked out as if it was like the most normal thing to like she's ever done. And of course, like no, no, sometimes, sometimes you witness things in shops and you go like, oh, that's a bit weird. And you know how to react mm. when something like that happens. And it's so unbelievably like shocking. We all just kind of stood there like, what the fuck like, just happened? Yeah, what if we just witnessed? Like, what just went on? I don't know if she ever got charged or anything with that. But then it was also the butter woman who oh, was like, we there's got to be an uprising because of all the cholesterol that's mm, in this butter. butter. And it was like, you're holding margarine, ma'am. I don't make clover. Like, I am not a clover. We just sell clover. I don't know who owns clover. Yeah, but like, <laughs> you're clo not in power. In Clover's this like a margarine brand here in UK. So it's not butter at all. It's just, like, oh, we're going to have an uprising about the calories and uh, cholesterol in this butter. And it was just like, you're in, like you're insane. Anyone, like people like this who quote with such conviction, this like conspiracy nonsense. I do, my brain kind of goes into like cope mode and I'm like, I have to leave. No, I know. So oh, yeah. my... Can I, no, I won't say his name. Yeah. My friend um, from high school, we went, when I went, my first one went to his house. We went to his, we went in his, in his kitchen and there was like a book on a shelf. And I was told that it was like, he used to say, oh, it's my mum's witchy books. And I was like, what? She was a bit sort of like hippie. No, mum. No, she was just, <laughs> she, <laughs> she was, gonna, she was gonna get loopy on a poopy. And I, st <laughs> I started um, like just reading this book and his mum came into the kitchen screaming, Sla grabbed the book out of man, slammed it shut. And she was like adamant that if I read that out loud, I would curse myself. Why? Because she was like, believe in that like, witchcraft. And she was like, you mm. can't read it and you cannot read it. You're going to be cursed. At that moment, I was like, oh, you explains a lot about you now. I need to go home. Yeah, I need to go home. <laughs> Very strange. That was a sign that I was like, oh, you're insane. Oh. When you get to that point in your mind where you're like, there is no way that I mm -hmm. can actually cope with this conversation anymore. So I have to look for an exit strategy. Yeah. For me, it's anyone that quotes, I don't know, Alex Jones with any like conviction. severe conviction. I'm like, do you know what? You're so lost that yeah. I'm just like, I'm just, bye. Well, I'm I, me carry I remember on with my watching day. this morning. It was like maybe six or seven years ago and there was God. flat earthers there. And there was this one person who was even ostracized from the flat earth community because he believed there was like a second ice ring outside the Alaskan ice ring that they already believe. And even they would, the flat earth people were like, no, that's, too far. It's too far. Stupid. It? Really, really dumb. This is one that I actually really want opinions on. Like people, yes. people watching this now, comment down below. What was something someone did to you when you suddenly go, oh, deranged. There's a, a screw loose somewhere there, mm. sis. I mean, COVID was one of those things where you just go, oh, everyone. Is Everyone's that, completely deranged. Are just the level of like medical understanding of people. Like I tried to, I remember I asked someone, well, so what do you think of viruses? And they were like, well, that's what they want you to believe. And it's like, Oh, um, you are You lost. shouldn't be able to have an opinion on viruses and shit. Like if you're if not you a scientist. If you haven't actually ever yeah. read about what like, they are. Like, sorry, yeah. you can't be like, oh no, it's the, the 5G. No! No! 5G. 5G! That insane woman. Now that was insane. The other man who was insane was like, F*** you! Do you want to buy my book? Oh my God. Yeah. Just people getting so irate over absolutely nothing. Yeah. When we, 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 were, we were going to Alton Towers. Towers, weren't we? And we, I'd rented a car and we, we, we went to stay in the, what was it? Splash Landings Hotel. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we drove up and we were like stuck behind this bus going through these tiny little country lanes. If anyone's driven around Alton, it's like... It's a tiny it's, village. You can barely fit two cars next to other to even drive. It was like... But we were like gridlocked on this yeah. like... Yeah, gridlocked. No one could move. And this like guy in this red car like was leaning out of his window yelling at the top of his lungs being like, F*** you! I can't believe you're doing it! Beep, beep! And it was like... <laughs> Oh my God. Like <laughs> no, no one can do fault. anything. No. We're not here because we've chosen to annoy you. Like it was so funny because we couldn't really make up what he was saying. No. So we then came up with this thing of like, F you, do you want to buy my F barnyard? And it was just like, I don't know why we came up with that, but it was, <laughs> but it was a great it, trick that was. It's Alton, it's very like countryside farmy. and farmy. Yeah, 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 so. countryside. Oh, it was ridiculous. What is the weirdest thing you've been told not to do because it's considered Gay. Oh, so I actually also looked at this, but mm -hmm. I was like, I won't pick this one because I bet Rowley will take yeah. this one. I remember my brother telling me when we were, like, I say younger, we were teenage years, mm. that he wouldn't clean his nails because they it was gay. Yeah, so when you see, like, the thick layer of dirt underneath the nails, he would say that he wouldn't clean it because it was gay. Just But he would bite his deranged. nails as well, and then, you know, death. We're really disgusting. But there are so many straight guys who genuinely believe that you can't wash your asshole. Yeah, you can't wash properly. You can't use moisturizer. You can't wear SPF because mm -hmm. it's gay. Oh, Wasn't there, there was a story we were reading on Reddit once where a man got like skin cancer and then he couldn't wear, he was like, no, I'm not putting SPF on because that's gay. Yeah. It's like ridiculous. you are li you literally, literally have dying. like melanoma, sir. Like the world doesn't care if you think it's gay, you're going to die. Someone's commented here, a few things I've been called gay for doing. 
reading, oh, using yeah. an umbrella, oh, yeah. wearing a sweater, <laughs> yawning, wearing a skirt with another man's name on it. Well, a that shirt, is kind not of a skirt. skirt. Oh, it's a shirt. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, but it's a skirt. Yeah, yeah, wearing a skirt. Oh, yeah, no, okay. Wearing a shirt with another man's name on it. I remember watching a video and it was like un i think it might, might have even been jamie's video but it was like you okay. know stupid like are oh, the straights okay kind of post and there was a, i remember this one man saying that if you go down on a woman it's gay that it's gay because you're being like subservient to her apparently pleasuring your girlfriend wife whatever is now gay the fr i can't believe that people still honestly go there's no such thing as toxic masculinity when you're saying that you cannot go down on your own girlfriend because it's gay and then you can say in the same sentence toxic masculinity isn't a thing like insane right. it is, they are completely yeah i mean if you are if you are a millennial if you're watching gag of the millennial um growing up in high school literally doing anything oh, everything was anything gay. that wasn't even remotely different was yeah. just a little tiny bit different you, you use a blue pen instead of a black one gay gay literally left-handed gay gay you got, got to school on time gay got to school <laughs> late gay <laughs> Kissed a girl, gay. That was such a like a real phenomenon back in like, the early 2000s. But it was also wasn't if it? you it was... were like a queer person, it was also like no, yeah. don't, don't, no. don't, don't shout that. No, I remember having I had like a watch years ago, and it would like do yes or no answers and oh, question and things. And people used to always come up to me and be like, "Is Rowley gay?" And the press it, and it'd be like, "Hi, it's gay. The watch says you're gay." But like that was like distraught when I was like, yeah, when I was like, like ten years now, old. It's like, what <laughs> stupid game that is. But like, yeah, when you're younger, it's like this is the worst. Yeah, thing. I'm gonna have to tell my therapist. What's right? Okay, so what's funny about how like, oh, this is gay. It's like in my my buddies in school would like draw, like I say draw graphic images of like of like teenager could draw of like me having sex with them and then send it to me like through like the letters in like school or whatever. And they'd be like, You're they would, gay. They would send me photos of me doing like sexual things to them, like draw it. And then call me gay because, but they've, they're the ones who've drawn the imagery of gay sex. Oh, it's a lot of like, mental it's, loopholes, it's isn't so it? Stupid. Mental gymnastics But they there. would always be the ones that like pretend to hump each other and like touch oh. each other up and stuff. And it's like, I'm sitting here not doing anything. Nothing is gayer keeping, than keeping, two straight men. Keeping myself to myself. Yeah. You're fully like essentially just sucking the other one off. Yeah. It's like, no. Nice. It's like, you, you like this, they're gay. And it's like, get <laughs> You're the one doing it, sis. Like, what are you doing? You're like, oh, cringe. <laughs> I wonder if that still happens in school now, or well, is just everyone gay now. I don't think no, because the whole like that's so gay thing. It doesn't. I don't really hear it. It's very rare no, that that's I hear true. it. Like I hear people saying like you're gay, but like when people say that's so gay, I don't really hear it anymore. Although I don't, I'm not hanging around with teenagers, so no, maybe very maybe true. Teenagers. Does it, does it still happen? Because I actually don't know. But I don't feel like it does. My dad used to tell my brother not to wash their hair so much, or they would turn gay. Imagine having washed hair. There's so much going, about hygiene that just means yeah. gay. It's so Yeah, what is it about men in hygiene? I don't know what about hy like hygiene. It's only a recent phenomenon as well, because back in the past, men used to be really flamboyant. used to wear powdered wigs. Yeah, exactly. And all, be all pompous around the woman. And, like, and that wasn't gay. No. That was considered very heterosexual, yeah, actually. It's so weird that we've got this like strange look on things where it's like, if you do it's anything that keeps yourself healthy and clean, you're gay. Well, the fact that they had to make that makeup called war paint oh yeah for men there's so there's like makeup concealer and foundation stuff called war paint and it's literally like the most average base product you can possibly imagine that they've tacked on like 50 pounds on yeah they were on dragon's den mm. just because like they want men to be able to wear makeup to hide like under eye bags or whatever but they had to call it war paint because men are so fragile that they you couldn't, couldn't just call it wear girly pop paint. girly pop paint yeah like, like get girly it. wig war paint it's and the thing is it's so like it's so far down the cringe where it's like actually embarrassing now to yeah, see people 100%. using it and the amount of men that were using it you'd see these adverts and they would be like clawing their clawing face, their yeah, face. I like, well gonna... i reacted to one didn't yeah, i and yeah, he's yeah. literally got like a beauty blender and he's just like this is how you do it and it's like no just teach men how to like no. look after themselves they could have like, easily have gotten a male makeup artist to just be like this is how you do it yeah for a really effective outcome yeah it's Done. so weird and like, even just men showing any kind of like emotional still to this gay. day is like it's considered gay to see a mind get upset or like cry or well, something well there was something on twitter that someone posted about a month ago that was just some like right wing nonsense but it was literally just like photos of men in an audience of a show like gasping that like holding their face being shocked and they were like oh these feminine men guys so gay and someone in the comments were like fellas is it gay to touch your face yeah and it was, everyone was like yes yes, <laughs> yes it, it is, is. Yeah, yeah yeah Puff. unfortunately yeah Puff die a lot of this is actually things like the andrew tate effect oh yeah it really really, is. really radicalized a lot of men but there was a whole thing about this year as well these like weird 
podcasty chat show things with like loads of incelly men with women and yeah. the whole thing is about like men just like well, shaming that, like, women whatever podcast yeah isn't and there's it? like that loads of them sit around a table and they just say the most awful things and it's like you so again it comes back to we've talked about this before where it's like they seem to really dislike women yeah and it's like but you are also obsessed with a specific part on a woman that's yeah. what that's why you claim to be so straight but yeah you actually hate women oh hate them hate women yeah you'll never find a group of people that love women more than like the queer community yeah, yeah they yeah. always rally behind a woman they've always got a pop queen or whatever like straight men just seem to really hate women yeah what is an opinion that you have done a 180 degree turn on Oh God! See, I that's find, an interesting yes, one. I find this one quite um, interesting because if I talk about my own personal life, yeah, you go, yeah. Oh, she's de transitioning. No, but <laughs> it is related. When I was growing up, I grew up in Brighton, which is a very gay place, but it's also one of the places with the highest rates of homophobia in the country mm. for obvious reasons. Usually, if if someone's living their life in freedom, people are often very opposed to that and the more visible it is the more visible people are opposed to it yes so when i was growing up i had quite like homophobic opinions because that was the environment i was brought up with and it wasn't until i was like 14 15 and realized there was something a bit different about me that i was like okay these opinions are clearly like i have to do some self-work yes here. but it's very difficult to do that as a teenager but i didn't i still had lots of transphobic opinions yeah and i actually had quite visceral transphobic opinions because i did actually know a trans woman in brighton i remember asking her really like transphobic questions that i would say now if someone asked me i'd be like you need to actually take a seat sis, and yes, not yes, speak yes. to me like that but at the time i was like struggling with this internal debate about who i am as a person and it wasn't until years later that i was like right finally understanding where i'm going in life yeah of course that now i feel like one thing that i've lived a hundred i've turned 180 percent on 180 degrees on even is like my relationship to the queer community because growing up i really didn't like it it was uh, almost seeing a mirror image of me of something that i really didn't like that was bullied vilified on tv like the amount of reality tv shows mm -hmm. i've just watched that have featured trans people janice dickinson being like oh you should model as a boy though yeah for this yeah, modeling yeah show. yeah like, all that really did affect the way that i perceived people growing up like my own people in my own community and now as a fully fledged adult of my mid thirties, almost I can say like that is a hundred percent a one hundred and eighty that I've done. Yeah, mine would mine's the same, but for gayness. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I've kept I still still live on my YouTube channel, but like there's that whole joke that I always make about myself when I made that Big Brother audition in two thousand nine. I was I'm like, not like other gays. I'm nothing. I'm not like the stereotype. I don't like makeup or design. I mean, I don't like design or hair, or whatever. Like I said, but like then it was coming from a place of like I don't Spite. want people to see. Yeah. yeah, I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not like no, I'm not feminine. When like as soon as the the camera turned off i was like the fuckiest bitch you have like ever seen but i really had an issue but a lot of it came with from bullying yeah i was oh, so 100%. severely bullied because of it that anything that could out me or relate to it even though i was out at this point it's baggage was like yeah like no not like that no stop don't so, talk to me about all that which is why i used to dress quite like towny chav back in the mm. day because it was my way of kind of fitting in as much where i wouldn't get the exposure that interesting i interesting that you say you, ha you used to do so, so my self-defense mechanism weirdly this makes no sense i was like in my head i came up with like little rules it's like well i'm not trans if i don't do that mm -hmm. but i'm uh, but i can still do all this yeah so i used to have like blue hair makeup everything but i was like i'm not trans if i don't wear a stiletto <laughs> like how ridiculous <laughs> is that like literally the most feminine person you've ever seen but i'm like because i'm in a boot i'm not trans like I love my that. little brain was just like and this is how i'm going Th to continue is, through yeah. life now and it's just like looking back, I'm like, you fucking idiot. Mm. Like, go to the NHS faster than that, sis. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is, what are the responses in there like from people? If it was really that bad, she would just leave. Oh, God. This that is, is the most like, I'm that, going yeah. to beat you up and but you're going to do nothing you know, about it. I think a lot of people online do still have this opinion of like, well, if, if that relationship was so bad, she would have just left. Or yeah. They would have just left. And it's like, my opinion through living through something similar, maybe not as bad, but similar to that is like, there are usually a lot of things at play in a situation like that. Yeah. And a lot of it isn't just as simple as, well, you can just leave at any time. You can just go, yeah, you why not? Just go, you can go, yeah, you can just leave, why not? Just treat yourself, bye. It's like, oh. Well, the thing is, that was how, that was the reason why Charlotte like Jeremy Carl was able to go on for so long. That's because true. it was based on, most of the situation in Jeremy Carl show was like, if Jeremy Carl is basically the English version of Jerry Springer, it wasn't as scripted, but it, you know, it still had the same elements. Yeah. But the reason that went on for so long is because so many people that were on that show were in situations where one person was being awful and the other person didn't leave them for a multitude of reasons. Like, it's so easy to sit back and look at situations where someone's being abused or you know there's something awful going on there that people have been talking about it but that like, why don't you just leave 
unless you're in the situation, yeah. literally shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like loneliness can make you do some weird things. Yeah. Which is why my last boyfriend, I stayed with him even though he was horrific to mm -hmm. be around. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. do it when you feel lonely, when you're in situations or like, you know, you've fallen for them sooner and then they start to show this side. Yeah, but yeah, all yeah, that yeah, yeah. feeling's already there. So you're always like, oh, but I remember how good it used to be so we can get back to there if I try harder. That if, if it's so bad, she'll leave is one of the worst things you could say to someone. 100%. Yeah. A lot of the time it comes down to like resources as well. So it's yeah. like, for me in my situation, it was like, I had nothing, mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. So I really couldn't just be like, well, bye. Yeah. Because like, where would, what would I have? Absolutely exactly, nothing. Yeah. Like you, you feel so trapped in that situation and it doesn't happen instantly because you don't meet someone and they're awful and then you go, oh, I've decided uh, to yeah, love them now. Like yeah, yeah. it never happens that way. It's always a slow, insidious rot. One of, so one of my things recently, which I think I'm going to try and incorporate a little bit into my channel at some point. I've got some rather salacious TV shows that I've mentioned mm -hmm. today in the group yeah. chat that I'm not going to give any spoilers for. I ate my baby. Yes. I feel like sometimes... This is where, so I used to be really like pro body positivity. Okay. Like almost that toxic positivity of like, well, everything's fine if they're happy with the way they are. Mm -hmm. I actually have changed my mind a little bit now through being in the relationship that I'm in and also understanding my own personal relationship with um, previous substances. I think a lot of this toxic positivity that can be related not just to body positivity, but to loads of things is actually a sign of like, glorifying addiction mm -hmm. and that's where my mind has now gone oh actually this is this is a net negative yeah like it's great for individuals to feel empowered and i do ne never think that anyone should ever feel like their position in society is wrong because of who they are but i do think we can separate some of the choices and the beliefs from oh, the course, individual yeah. mm -hmm. and we can say okay this is glorifying addiction whether that's to too much plastic surgery whether that's to sugar whether that's to other substances yep. i've been kind of apprehensive to say online because it's it's not popular to say i can enjoy someone but i can still have a problem with some of the things they say i think it also goes back a little bit to like the drag race fan that we were talking about yeah, it's yeah. Like you can really stand behind someone and enjoy all of them but you can still be like this little thing that you're doing is still bad yeah like, yeah, yeah 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 you can still hold people not accountable i feel like that's too strong of a word but like you can you don't have to you don't have to be 100 percent in on everything yes of course you can be yeah. like 90 if you want like Sure. Can you think of anything off the top of your head that you've that I've changed, changed recently? my mind of recently? Um, I mean, I don't think some of it is linked to trauma, though. But like, you know, if you've known for a long time, obviously, if I have food aversion and stuff. Yes. But I actually, I feel like I've changed my mind. Is it really changing my mind? My mindset going into trying new things is less uh, instantly cutting off. Do you know, I'm actually going to really commend you for saying that because I've noticed this change. Oh, it's okay, been, good. It's been about a year, I want to mm -hmm. say, but you've been so much more like, yes, and then maybe no, yeah. rather than being like, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. Which I, I it's, it actually, it's, it's, it's lovely it's to It's lovely say, to see. You can miss out on so many things if you go, no. Yeah. The one thing that really surprised me is when we went out for your birthday and you had calamari. <laughs> I was like... What? Who's this lady? I didn't want to make a thing of it because I wasn't going to be like, oh, yes, she's having calamari. But I was like, oh, I'm quite surprised. It's good. It. What yeah. a lovely little surprise. And it was terrible calamari. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. But maybe just don't even bother sometimes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I well, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if that like fits into this. But like, I, I, do you know what? I'm gonna executive decision. Yeah. It oh does. yeah. 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 This is a yes. fun one. Yes. And I said, what's your best joke? Oh, what's purple and eats people? Purple people eat. Yes. <laughs> She's is. a woman. So my, I mean, I have told this joke before, but my favorite joke ever is the the tampon one. Do you oh, remember the tampon know. joke? Do you remember the tampon joke? No. Mm -hmm. So it's there are three tampons walking down a road, like a road, and they're just going. Da, 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 da. And so haunting. <laughs> someone, someone just like walks past them and goes, "Hi guys!" And the tampons look at the man, give him a dirty look, look up and down, and then just continue walking on. Why did they do that? Because they're all stuck up. <laughs> That's my most. Wow. <laughs> Wow. That's my favorite joke. Oh, ever. no. Um, and also, like, I love a uh, dangerous I love, woman. I, I love why did the boy drop his ice cream? 
because he was hit by a bus. That's, <laughs> that's my that's one of my favorite jokes as well. Or it's like, why did Susie fall off the swings? Because she had no arms. Because she died. Because she died. Oh no. I don't ever tell jokes. I won't be like, I've It's got because a you joke. are the joke. I've, well, thank you, yes. <laughs> no, I'll never be like, oh my God, come gather round, lads. I've got a joke to talk. Well, like, I don't really tell we jokes. Just, we just say the most unhinged things and that becomes hilarious. Like yeah. the other day, when me and Callum were coming back from New York, we both just eaten breakfast and the lady was like what would you like for breakfast how do you like your eggs and I in my like stupor because I was already full I was like I couldn't possibly eat anything else I was like oh just cracked directly in the bin and it was like the funniest moment possible at that time but it's like one liners are what Mm -hmm. we all do oh yeah that's why like it's like reactions I bought my shoes from a drug dealer I don't know what he laced them with but I've been tripping all day oh Oh, oh, no you are funny Funny. I want to die peacefully in my sleep like my grandfather did not screaming in terror like the passengers did in his car. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, she's a dark woman. <laughs> I love it. No, I've got like, yeah, I've got one like, what, what, what goes black, white, bonk, black, white, bonk, black, white, bonk. Luxaria Enquette. Okay, what else goes black, white, bonk? I don't know. A nun falling down the stairs. Oh, dear. Oh, she's, yeah. had a, she's had too much cat. Yeah, 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 she's, she's had, had too did, much yeah. The nuns are on cat. The you cat heard it here. How did the kid from your school die? Oh. Mm. Coke overdose. We've got naughty ones. Here. Oh, have you? Okay, right, right, right. Yes, right. You go. There was a boy from a family of al- alcoholics. Parents oh. divorced. He lived with his mum, who was very he- a very heavy drinker, and the st- and a stepdad. Stepdad had a son who spent quite some time in a mental facility and rehab because he was effed up uh, because of drug mm. use. The son eventually came home to live with his father and my classmate. One time, the classmate accidentally saw his stepbrother sniffing glue from a bag. Stepbrother got mad, poured kerosene on him, and lit him up when his mother saw her child was burning she jumped out the window and ran away while his younger sibling were trying to put them out the fire unfortunately he didn't survive how awful is that what i'm so what have you just read to me what is that i said they got dark towards the end my god what on earth yeah okay that's completely deranged that's completely that, deranged. like how on earth could you ever be like a, a you know like, oh, I've seen someone doing drugs, so the obvious only response is to set them on fire. Mental. Like, I don't, I, this un, unhinged behavior. That's unhinged. But I, I feel like that's probably not unhinged compared to like what some people will probably share in the comments about like oh, how yeah. the person died at their school. Because I feel like everyone's got this story. Well, I think as well, when, when someone like a child dies, because like it's uncommon for child children just to die of age, like mm. it's... I think it's you get shocking. more unhinged stories because yeah, it's like, well, true. how did they had they, to be something happen? Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, an electrician screwed up rewiring my friend's family's house. So a live wire was touching a metal pipe connected to the bath. Her mum was wearing rubber work boots when she filled the bath so she wasn't electrocuted, but she must have accidentally brushed against the tap or gone to add some more water while submerged and was killed instantly. We lived in a very small town where everyone knew each other, so it was really rocked our community. She was the she was a grade above me, so she was only around 10 or 11. Oh my God, that's terrible. I, I I never even thought about like accidental death is so sad i never thought about like wires in the wall that might be like disconnected you get like Mm. shocked by something Mm. because i remember like when we were younger there was always like psa's about like don't change your light bulb with the plug turned on with the with the tap with the switch on with the tap on yeah and like things like that but like to think of like a live wire that was like disconnected from like near the bath area that shocked them i think this is why we don't often hear about many house fires and things anymore is that like safety has moved on quite a lot and i know there's that thing of like health and safety is written in blood because quite often it is like there will be situations in which like oh if a wire is touching something now it's got like a way of being like no you're not going to actually conduct and just electrocute your whole house yeah. with a child in the bath like that is deranged what mind you i don't know how any of us made it out of like the 90s when everything was just like go on off you go into the woods yeah, die how did anyone survive <laughs> Other words, die. but we had um I can't... my nan when i was growing up didn't have um seat belts in her back in the back of her car it wasn't a legal jesus. requirement when i was growing up jesus yeah literally if cars were made after a cer- before a certain date they didn't have to have seat belts in the back that's insane and i remember riding in the back being like this is Whee! really fun but like she'd had an accident on the motorway dead. you would have immediately dead you, out the window if you hit her at 30 dead she would have stopped seeing her if, if you, you hit, hit her, her at 40, 40 dead, dead. <laughs> <laughs> there was a i remember I, I think i might have told the story in our like it was like unhinged school story oh, or something yes. but i mean that oh, was yes. that was like four years ago but 
Um, it's not Bertie's the, it's not, no, dead. No, it's not the Bertie oh, one. Is it not? So there was another Ooh. girl. It was in, I think it was year seven. Mm. It was year seven. And we had a huge assembly because like she disappeared for a while. None of us knew what happened. Like why did, oh, God. Um, I remember her name, I was saying it, but like why did she like disappear from school why for like weeks? Patrice. And we had a, an assembly. And in that time, what had happened, her dad was apparently oh, yes. quite abusive. And her dad and one of his like unhinged like rants killed her mother God. in front of the children tr tried to do the children the children managed to escape and the man ran off when like the like the neighbors and things heard and so we had this like huge assembly of like just they so you know this has happened because it was it was impossible to like not keep that like to, like, to keep yeah that would have been like national one. news yeah as so well. it was like we had to we had an assembly to be like don't talk about it to her Make sure you f make her feel welcome and everything. But it was a shocking thing in our like small little town to be like, oh, this this God. woman. And I bet you there were some absolute like problem children in school that would have been like, ha ha. Oh yeah, like, absolutely like, awful. That was awful. That's so sad. There's another one here that says, how did the kids at your school get expelled? So one says here, oh, he kicked my friend in the ass so hard it broke his tailbone. <gasps> he literally broke my friend's ass. Oh, Can no. you imagine like breaking your coccyx? That is un. I don't want to imagine all that. That sounds rather remarkably unpleasant. And then is it running through the cafeteria at lunch naked with a backpack set on fire? Well, that's quite a spectacle, isn't it? <laughs> that's <laughs> definitely a way like, oh, nobody's paying me any attention today. What shall I do this? And another one says here, he sprayed another student with Zippo fluid and attempted to set the student on fire what while he was what, tackled. Sorry, what is it about fire? Mind you, pyromaniacs were, were a thing like growing mm. up, weren't they? Like, I, There was always that child that was like, I just want to set things on fire. And you'd be like, Please leave me alone. How was her someone, was someone expelled at your school for yes. stuff? Yes. So there was one girl in particular who she was expelled from our school for dealing coke on the premises. Oh. And we were only in year, I think we were year, must have been year nine. So what's that? 12, 13 years old? Yeah, about 12 or 13. 12 yeah, or 13 yeah. years yeah. old. Yeah. So she had, she brought like, obviously like drugs into school and was selling them to like the older kids in year in the year 11 Jesus. and was caught and was instantly expelled it was whole like this whole police thing there was her best friend who was called I'm not going to say her name actually but she was a very Francesca. very big scary woman and she uh, brought a gun in and she was expelled. Yeah, she was expelled. There was also, there was so much that happened in this school. And it actually, it went to, it went into special measures, like mm -hmm. the year that I left that school. And then we had like a super head come in and they've like changed it round. And I, I showed you yeah, yeah, the you school show, yeah, relatively yeah. recently. And it still looks pretty much the and same. And you showed me the dip. I did show you the dip. <laughs> the dip. And we had an, in, an encounter in the dip, the dip with yep. a local from the dip. Yep. And it was quite a moment of like, oh, let's leave the dip. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it though. I loved the little oh, the dip. Yes, I'm glad that something happened so you can be like, oh, something happened in the dip. Yeah, it made the the, the, the lore of the dip became oh, so God. like that. Like I was so anticipating this like dramatic thing, so, and like, it, when, I did. When, yeah, when like when the when the woman in the shop and the man in the shop was like, touch my knee, go yeah. on, touch, touch my it. Knee. I got a metal knee. I fell out a tree. Touch my knee. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't want to touch your knee. I want my chips. Thank you. <laughs> the I my so expelled. There was a guy. I remember he was being tackled on the floor. I don't remember exactly what he did, but I remember. Remember, there was one guy, he was, the, the, the thing is, which makes it even worse, he was, he was like tackled on the floor by the paedophile drama teacher. Oh, of course he was. And of course he we was. were waiting for the school bus and we could just hear this like screaming and shouting. And this, again, this is about year seven or oh eight. I don't God. know exactly. And he was on the floor, like swearing top of his lungs, like screaming, screaming, while Mr. Hornblower was on top of him being like, he's sick, he's sick. I don't know what happened, but apparently he like attacked a student with like a bar or something. And then was like screaming the obscenities or things. I don't know how, but he got expelled for like attacking a student or something. Oh, God. But I don't remember anything really when it comes to expelling i don't really remember it happening no anything too dramatic like there were horrible people and bullies and things but like a lot of the bullying just got overlooked because it was like well you're the gay one who cares like the people yeah, who were bullied 100%. were like the weirdos they there were... was uh, i've shared i know that i've shared this story there was a guy in my year who had blue hair who brought in a knife and like threatened the bullies of his sister um because he was gay his yeah. sister was getting bullied because he's gay and he brought in a knife held it to one of their throats i remember that guy in particular and said and basically was just like leave my sister alone or yeah. i'll kill you and that was him. He was there. No, he went into internal exclusion because it was under investigation because it was technically self-defense. Mm -hmm. But like internal exclusion means like you're basically like removed from yes, school. Yes, of course. And you just yeah. come in for like 
babysitting, mm-hmm. basically. Oh, awful. School, when we went to it, was all, I wonder if it's still just as bad, mind you. I don't you. know. I don't know. Well, Depends as, where you as, are. As you said about your school, a couple of years after I left my school, my school went to administration. Oh, yeah. And now it's like a prism. I was really shocked when we went back to mine. There's literally like giant bars around it. I was like, oh, it really is like a prism. Yeah. It was really, it was, it, it feels. Times of change. Yeah. But like, we, I mean, I do feel like, though, a lot of kids in my school just kind of, we had a, our school was so big that like some students were doing awful things and just got away with it because, yeah, because like no one could see no one knew that it was happening what's one thing that you would buy regularly if you had unlimited money oh god i'm also going to extend that to like what's the first thing you would get if you had unlimited money i mean obviously i think everyone would have like i don't think it's a selfish phase but they wouldn't seem like okay i'd probably buy like a nice house and just set myself up and then set my friends and family up for like, life or whatever and give them whatever they needed uh, do you know though although you say that that's actually indicative of you being a nice lady because a lot of people wouldn't do that immediately no, no. <laughs> They'd be like, right, into right. my veins, yeah. all of it. If it's, I mean, if it's an unlimited money, then I'll just give the rest to charities and constantly just save the world. I don't know, like, how would you, yeah. if it's unlimited? This is just it, isn't it? Because if you're thinking of, like, everyday items, I'd love to have just, like, a fully stocked fridge and not have to think about it. I just always want to, because, like, for example, today, you've given me a nice little energy drink that I've had, mm-hmm. because I just keep forgetting to go out and get some, and I'm just like... If I had unlimited money, I'd just have a stock of like all the little things that I need all the time that I then wouldn't have to waste time being mm-hmm. like, it's got to go thanks, but it's got to do all that. Blah. But if we're talking about like big purchases, obviously a house, obviously that kind of stuff, set my friends and family up for life. Blah, blah. Probably get Biscuit his own apartment somewhere. <laughs> An <laughs> eight his, story building. Yeah, just for Biscuit. <laughs> for a yeah. little tiny And he would dog. hate it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think for me, it would be something like the older I'm getting, the more I'm like, legacy i'm thinking about like how will i remember be remembered after i pass away so you would make a solid gold statue of you of myself right in the trafalgar square uh, yes exactly (laughs) that no i would like to think that i would start tackling one of those big like questions in life that's like maybe not something as like solving all world hunger hunger because like although that's great in principle i bet actually it's incredibly difficult and probably would require more than an unlimited amount of funds yeah i'm not sure i have no idea how you would have to also like politically be have like unlimited power as well so maybe like fund science or fund something to create a legacy and then have like a building named after me or like a wellness Mm -hmm. trust or something named after me luxurious Woman on the game. Lemon bottle survey. <laughs> lemon bottle. <laughs> lemon curd. I, Someone here has said travel all around the world. And it's like, uh, you don't have to have unlimited funds to make that work. No, I feel like, you. yeah, you don't need unlimited. You, could, you just need no, like, belongings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's like, yeah, if it's like less serious than all the stuff I said, mm. like, I would probably like get myself the ultimate, like, gaming setup oh yes yeah, imaginable bit, yeah like the highest powered everything and like the entire wall just like well, an entire could, screen of light you literally you could also like <laughs> hire people to like private investigate and find out like all those hidden gem games that you just can't get anymore yeah, yeah that exactly, you can't yeah. even emulate like mm-hmm. they are gone to time yeah. it's just like, oh I re- but i remember it so i really want it ever. yeah stupid things like that i'd love i'd love to have like the the biggest high quality high range technology stuff because i'm a tech nerd so i like yeah, i'd, I'd I trade like my that. camera in for like the biggest high-tech camera and I, my videos would be so high quality even youtube's like no get off my platform yeah scaring us. very that i actually also feel like a question like this needs a bit of a caveat as well because if i'd got unlimited money suddenly in 2009 i'd probably be dead by now i had a troublesome couple of years Mm -hmm. should we say and if i'd had unlimited funding during that time probably wouldn't be here anymore and there needs to be like but you have to be a responsible adult with it yes exactly that takes the fun out of it because like some people would say like a gaming room filled with technology is not responsible you need to buy worms the thing is i feel like though you would become a huge target for these like conglomerate corporations who have all the power there's a lot of danger yeah there's a lot of danger to trying to solve a lot of stuff that we've just said like as people like us like if we other people make money. money from it yeah so people are like you know the, the people hype like Nestle, I bet it it wouldn't surprise me if they tried to like take you out. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. So you, you, d- stop- you d- if you have if, well, I, I guess it's one of those things again of like if you had unlimited money and you kept it quiet, perhaps that would be and you lived like within your means, even though you were being a bit flamboyant with it. Mm it wouldn't attract attention. Whereas if you like went to the papers and were like, I'm the richest lady in the world. In the universe. And it's like, oh, but you haven't got like, I don't know, an, a fortress that you live yeah. in. It would be like, oh, you are a target yeah, now. Yes. Yeah, the Daily Mail's going to be right there. Build a moat. Exactly. Build a moat, fill it with crocodiles. A two mile moat. 
too oh, I'd be very isolated. Yeah. Like, you'd be like, I don't like all this money. I've got no friends. Yeah. Um. So this one says, what is the most toxic fan base you've ever seen? Oh God, Drag Race. Hands drag down. Race. I would say, so Drag Race is definitely one of those ones that has become incredibly toxic over mm. the past, what? I would say the past maybe like four or five years it yeah, started it's actually to get... quite a long, long time now. Yeah. I know we, we, we bitch about Gen Z a lot being stupid or something, but like there's something about Gen Z that tends to have this idea that it's fully okay to just be actually quite hateful to people for no reason. <laughs> yeah. And our generation grew up where people were kind of just being outrageous and outlandish and stuff. And like, yeah, we, we sometimes we have problems with things and stuff, but I don't feel like we were really like a dog pile so, like yeah, generation. There, yeah, there wasn't like this concept of, I guess it's like cancel culture if mm. you want to really. Oh, she's going boomers. The MySpace era is the one I immediately thought of when you yeah. said that. And like people were vile. Yeah, people, people were, were saying were really stuff. awful people, but it didn't seem like it was culturally an issue like yeah. it was like someone would say something unhinged but everyone would know that that person's just saying it to be unhinged yeah they're not actually like that and then every now and then there would be someone who was actually awful and that's when people would be like that's too far actually. yeah We're following them and so like now like when we see drag race contestants being like run off instagram and twitter and all that stuff just because like they're performing a different way on the show. It's, I, I'm genuinely I like, you're unwell. Like, you're yeah. unwell. I don't understand as well how you watch a show like Drag Race in 2023 and think this is a show based purely on talent and who deserves to win. It is a TV it's show. It's a reality TV show. It is show. so heavily scripted and edited. Most of the stuff you watch on Drag Race has been pre-scripted, well, predetermined. The way, the way that we can say that that's completely true is the amount of scandalous people they've had on the show that they've had to just completely edit out. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like, okay, but they still made a fully fledged contained show whilst also editing out someone who was in the room at yeah. all times. Like, like this, this series of Drag Race UK had an essay person, person. on it. They were on for three episodes, I think it yeah. was. But like- You didn't see them. You, have, you had you to had, really look in yeah. order to see like a leg or- because the editors completely edited this person out and maybe have no idea that this happened. It's yeah. like nothing you see now on these shows are real. So the idea that like when one of the contestants might bitch about the other one or say something in the confessionals, it's like that happened weeks after this was actually filmed. Mm -hmm. That the whole show is filmed a year the year prior. So like even when it goes live, all that shit would have been resolved even if it was real. Yeah. But half the fights and the reactions aren't even the reactions and fights that happened in that moment. They're cut audio clips from like different parts that are spliced in with this mm -hmm. one to make it seem mm -hmm. like this is more dramatic. Mm -hmm. And like the idea now that like you, you there's someone to say something and then they get dogpiled on Twitter. I just get completely bombarded with like, I'm going to kill you because yeah, you threats. don't like my favorite queen. It's oh, like just disgusting. I, yeah, I will say there is this recent surge, I guess is the word, of people being unable to tell fact from fiction yeah i think this is basically comes down to the the entire internet full stop right now yes, not even just like gen z and stuff because the amount of boomers that are sharing stuff on facebook or whatever and being like this is real it's really happening it's like no no it's not, no it's not, sis. why can't you tell the difference it's like the level of critical thinking has just gone there's yes. just hardly any like there's not a moment of like at no point when you're sending a death threat to someone you don't know a celebrity on the internet who does who literally cross dresses for a living at no point did you go in that sentence Maybe I won't send that. Actually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know uh, maybe I'll just go outside and have a walk. Well, it was like talking about those the fake stuff. It's like uh, when the whole Target thing happened in the summer with the whole Pride stuff, and then there was those oh. people who passed off those satanic AI images of Target, going, "It's real. They're selling these like satanic images to children." It's like this is not a real image. This was no. generated for a laugh, and you've taken it as deadly serious. Now run with it as if like Target and is selling also... satanistic like clothing to children and also so what if they so were what? it's clothing yeah. get mm -hmm. over it what i've noticed over the past couple of years as well which has actually it made leaks. me a bit sad the eurovision fan base is becoming incredibly toxic as well and this year it was really prevalent because of the the result between lorene and oh uh, yeah oh, lorene yeah. and karia there are still people now just like fighting over the internet about like who won who should have won and it's like go outside yeah go outside like it's nearly a dog year piling on an all like and also like people taking out on people like lorene for winning it's she didn't do anything no, I was gonna she say just went and performed. Yeah. Like she didn't attack do... the franchise. Yeah, like she not, didn't yeah. do anything, but people are literally like, I've seen it many like times. She's stolen from a baby. Exactly. It's so stupid. Like, I love Eurovision. Eurovision is one of my favorite things in the entire existence. So to see like the Twitter and like comment section, like online fan base of Eurovision become so angry because it was the same last year when Ukraine won anyway. Like the, yeah. the 
outrage of people on Twitter. And it's like, shut up. I just hate it. I hate it because What's... your favorite didn't win. Like... Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's ugh, it's just exhausting, isn't it? It's strange how they always attack the individuals and not like the franchise that creates the storyline to begin with. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's like, well, okay. So when like a lip sync lady sends home someone else in uh, Drag Race, nobody goes after RuPaul, even though it's RuPaul's decision. Absolutely. Everyone's yes. just like, you're the worst. I you can't defeated believe you sent my her home. She favorite. was my, yeah, it's, it's really like, disgusting. Well, so also your favorite can be shit. Yes. Like your favorite doesn't have to be the absolute best at everything. Well, that, that's the, you can that's like the, shit things. That's the, that's the, that's the, the weird thing that's about it. It's like, that's the game where like, it's, it's fully okay for your favorite to not do well in a challenge or something. And it's but okay some... to still like them from yeah, that. Yeah, but no, they're like, no, we have to love everything they possibly do. And it's like, that's not good. Like no. blind fandom towards someone is not good. In the any world way, shape, is or very form. nuanced. Because that's how, whatever. That's how people like Andrew Tate get Happen. so big because ev- there are a group of people that become so obsessed with them that even when they do awful things like, no, top G, Andrew Tate fanboys are G. insane. Oh, they are Like completely. they are absolutely insane. Alex and Jones not, fans, turfs, yeah. like any of these people that say really inflammatory things and then people just like devote their lives to them. My one now, which could technically be like a product placement if you like, is oh dear. what company actually sells great products? So I can actually think of one company in particular that I really like and that's Canon. Oh, they sell. I've yeah, never no. had a bad problem with like my Canon so- actually, uh, yeah, Canon I've, hardware. I've used Canon cameras since 2011. Yeah, and I've I've actually never had to send it back for repairs. I've never nope. had to send any. Uh, that's actually true. True. I've never really had a problem that I haven't been able to fix with them, and it's usually just down to like me misunderstanding a setting rather yeah. than actually like the camera being at fault or something like that. I think in this day and age, it's actually really difficult to find a company that you're like, oh, you've got a customer for life from me. Like yes. I will happily just purchase. The next newest thing after you've like after my last one is used up by you. Yes. But Canon cameras is absolutely that for me. I was saying my rings. Oh yeah. The Great Frog. There's a shop in London. They got one in Japan. I think there's one in California. Oh. Yeah, they got one in Japan. You know, in California, they sell my rings. I always get asked, "Where's my rings from?" It's called the Great Frog. And there's a store here in London, just off of Carnaby Street. Always loved them. They've always been fast. They've fixed any issues like sizing if I need to change it, polishing it. They'll do it instantly. Like that's a that's a nice little Very random good. non. Woman. Woman. <laughs> a random non A non random yes. That's a yeah. product that I, I've always enjoyed. What's people said in the in the comments? Nintendo consoles. F- load of fing <laughs> shit. Shut up. Do you- <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's 2023 why is your console 720 no i agree like, okay, shut yeah. up sorry no. you're yeah, the f- i loved watching the i loved watching the videos when mortal kombat 1 came out of like oh, mortal yeah. kombat 1 running on xbox like series x and ps5 and then how it was running on the switch and it was like abysmal yeah. and people go well it's impressive that they still got it to run no <laughs> cough. Yeah. Listen, don't say things that don't try to justify yeah. it's awful yeah. this console is like Three consoles behind recent, it is, recently yeah. stuff. And it's not the same generation as the It's not the, the same ones. generation, but stop trying to put things on it. Because also, a lot of the time, it now affects games that are being produced now. Because in the back of producers' minds, they're like, but well, we have to also make it for this. Therefore, sometimes other consoles have to suffer. A hundred percent. old. Co- and like, the thing is, this isn't about like not being able to afford new consoles. It's because the Switch is the newest console yeah. in Nintendo. So like, there's nothing above it. So I yeah I hate it. I I can't believe they haven't brought out at least a 1080p version or mm. like a 2K version. But even just I hate the fact that if you buy a online digital copy of their games, it is more expensive to buy a digital copy oh, yeah, than, than a physical, physical copy of their game. That makes zero sense. And nothing ever goes on sale with nothing, them. As no, well. they're, they're always like, like do you know what? Sixty pounds forever. Yeah. And Nintendo are the ones who are always so fucking annoying with copyright systems oh, yeah, and they like are. Yeah, being yeah. really scummy about like copyright striking channels for playing yeah. Nintendo. Yeah. So, yeah. So this Nintendo, no, fuck you, Nintendo. Oh. Like, I love things. That, I like some of the stuff you've got, yeah. but let's not pretend that they're these like wonderful company that's like does everything. No, fuck you. I actually, I actually completely agree there. I think that so, for example, the reason why I didn't play the latest Zelda game was because I played through Zelda. What was it called? The Sword? No, the original one was Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. I loved the game. I hated the console that it was on. Mm-hmm. I felt like the Switch really limited my enjoyment of that game because the controls are wacky. They're not really like it just doesn't allow you to have like smooth, fast action combat. It's kind of like, oh, oh the, I've the, actually broken. Of... And I can't climb up here because I've leapt off to my death. And it's just like 
20 and then like 21 frames per second. Yeah, there was like, lots of frame dropping in it. You've ruined what could have been an excellent... If that was on PS4 or on Xbox or even on PC, that would have been an infinitely better game. Yeah. And also, why is Nintendo not made an MMORPG like World of Warcraft but for Pokemon? Yeah. Why haven't they done this? Mm-hmm. A, sub- a huge subscription service. They'd be making so much money. Why are they hell-bent on being like, CD polygons on uh, portable, uh, but also 20 frames per Yeah, second. I feel like Nintendo have uh, kind of been off their game for a little while. Yes, I, I think agree. in like the mid-2000s... It's a toy. It's a toy. Yeah. It's not a com- competition anymore. I think in the mid-2000s, they were actually really good. I think, mm. I, although like the Wii wasn't my favorite console, I actually really enjoyed a lot of the games that were on it. I think that it was, was also revolutionary. Yeah, I think it was quite fun and exciting. But since then, they've just like not stepped up at all it's what's also really weird about the nintendo switch is that it is kind of like the same as the wii u if you remember that well it, essentially they made the switch to like offset the wii u because the yeah wii u, the wii u you was failed. like a catastrophic failure also for pacing name wii u what yeah stupid awful. wii u wii u Hence ambulance why they just re-released basically like every wii u game onto the switch mm-hmm. like so essentially they lost like two three years when the wii u and gone well we're just gonna make the switch now but like it is the wii u so they're like yeah, three years 100%. three years behind like natural consoles as they are now and like it's not necessarily about needing the best graphics because that doesn't always make a great game no. but it's the fact that the console can't handle games that they're yeah, creating it needs it, like if you're gonna have like lower graphics it needs to have really smooth gameplay yeah in my opinion and yeah. i think anything with smooth gameplay i'll be happy to play so i disagree with that person that he's yeah, a nintendo absolutely. fanboy do you know play, the playstation one was 60 frames per second and that was like 240p obscene isn't obscene. that obscene and you can't even produce that on uh switch now <laughs> is that just oh it just makes me ill it makes me ill ill but Ill. The, i think actually, all, all the nintendo stuff the most shocking to me is the fact that like the games are always astronomically priced forever and the digital copies are more expensive yeah than the, like, the i think it's, ones. it's probably because it makes it more awkward to have to change the games in a Switch because then you actually have to... Because the whole point is you can take it with you. Yeah. So, like, if you want to take games with you, they're going to make you pay more for the ease of having it just all in one place. Yeah. Rather than being like, oh, I also have to take these Well, the thing is you've got to be careful, me. though, because even the PlayStation lost their license with Discovery Plus and loads of That's people true. who have bought programs and TV shows and everything with Discovery Plus on PlayStation Can't have, have lost it all. Yeah. Which is why I always say I much prefer physical media yeah, because it's never going anywhere. Yeah, 100%. Whenever I get the option of buying, like, a disc drive thing, I will always go for it mm-hmm. just because like I have some really I'm like I don't know when I'm gonna play them I don't know if I ever will in my life but like I like the option yeah <sighs> that's the tea and that's the gag what of the do millennium. you want to yeah. ask reddit that what we might see in a reddit? year's time mm-hmm. I do I, I actually really like this one because it's like it's more free range yeah there's ever free range questions quiz. <laughs> yeah free range questions <laughs> we get to walk in a bedroom and not a cage I feel like barn kept quiz when we actually talk about um what's the one thing that you realize someone's a bit Loopy on Loop. their poopy. Oh, yes. I mean, just watch one of our videos. Oh, there and they're you like, go. well, these people are. But this, you say this though, but then like a lot of people in our comments are like, I really like how inspiring and down to earth you are. And I'm like, I'm literally screaming at yeah. the top of my lungs, yeah. put your pussy in a wig. <laughs> and they're like, what a sensible woman. Elect exactly. her. Like making and I wouldn't have it any other way. Parody songs of Oompa Loompas. And oh, yeah, there going, you go. I don't like <laughs> <laughs> Jesus was, in fact, a bottom. Exactly, the squatting for true. Jesus. Inspiration. Mm. A sign of the times. Well, thank you for watching and listening with us today. Yes. I hope you've enjoyed this one of Ask Ridwaj. And again, yes. if you'd like us to do a part three of this, please let us know. And as we always say, if there's any other topics I think you'd love us to talk about, please comment down below. Mm-hmm. Some topics that are like, obviously not too heavy, that's going to be like disturbing. Yeah. But you know, Fun, like, yeah, energy, yeah, yeah. but also has, like, an element Silly. of naughtiness. Naughty. Naughty. You are naughty. Please let us know down below. Um, and, yes, yeah, so if you if you do listen to this on SoundCloud or Spotify, all that stuff, please oh, give us, like... read it on Goodreads. If you read it on Goodreads, mm. the transcribes mm. the entire podcast. Trans. Stop um, trans. Stop them. Uh, gender madness. Um, if you would like to give us, like, a five-star review, that would be really lovely on, like, mm-hmm. Spotify and all that mm-hmm. stuff as well. Please do that. Lots of love. Gold and stars, I- iTunes, stars, iTunes. 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 Podcast. Woman. And- um, shared and write an article about flicker, us. um oh, photo bucket photo bucket uh, a screenshot rendition um rendi- a screen uh, interpretive dance at your local theater <laughs> the millennial interpretive dance oh. <laughs> anyway i would pay to see it i would as well mm. please hit the like button subscribe notification bell obviously luxo's links will be down below as well go Thank follow you. her go give her a nice little pussy yes. um and we'll see you soon for another Gag of the Mirage. Gag of the Mirage. Ba-ba. 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 <laughs> <laughs>